as you're swinging the golf club back, that encourages the hip rotation, but then the change of direction, it's the hips and the lead knee moving towards the target in the downswing. Okay, Ryan, so what we've got over here on the right-hand side, we've got a good player and we've drawn a vertical line up from the inside of their lead foot here. And in this video, what we're going to be talking about is the effect of the lead knee position in the downswing mm -hmm. uh, on your ability as a player to shift your pelvis forward enough in space as it's rotating to get into a position where essentially, for the guys at home, they're not hanging back. Yep. Okay, so as we look on the left hand side with the professional golfer they make this movement to the top of their swing and by the time they get back down to lead arm parallel we can see that that knee has moved into what's called an external position so the lead knee has moved out towards the target rather than stayed in yep now if we look at this gentleman over here on the right hand side as he gets into that position we can see it's actually still very much so touching that line okay so in space his pelvis as such hasn't moved forward enough he is still very narrow through the legs yep and as a result of doing so something really really interesting happens in the next section of the swing okay and we do see this with a lot of players and time and place if they're very skillful they can get it done but for this instance this player was struggling with this on the right hand side we can see that the back the front foot there We'll zoom in on this foot here. That front foot jumps back and away. Okay. Yep. So a big movement back and away. Over here on the left hand side with the professional, we can see that very stable movement through the golf ball that you'd see with the majority of players. Okay. Now, it is not a rule. There are exceptions to this, but for the majority of players, they would benefit from having a relatively stable or relatively stable footwork through the golf ball because that allows us to shift our pressure better and transfer more consistent energy and delivery of the club back into the ball, correct? Absolutely, yep. yeah. So the final piece here is we'll just look at this term in terms of this player hanging back as such, something that we see a lot of players research on Google and then also work towards fixing. And we'll just talk about the difference in how much of the hips is forward and through, let's say by about this stage of the line of the swing versus this one here. Okay, so we can see that back foot is really slid out. And as we see the amount of pelvis that has shifted forward from the professional over there on the left-hand side versus on the right, definitely hanging back a bit there, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so anything else you'd add to that? Yeah, I just think I think what the lower body then does to the upper body and how that relates as well. Mm. So if the you know the upper body, you can see there's you know, really kind of still quite far back here. So this player in particular kind of got the club a little bit too far behind him, yeah, just exactly. due to that hang back a little bit, right? So the club falls behind, and we get a lot of kind of like a hook release almost. Yeah, absolutely. So when we're looking at this and improving this with this player, let's talk about the process that you worked through. So assuming all things being equal, the setup here was reasonably functional. So we're going to focus purely just on this movement from the top and then what happens in the downswing with the lead knee and then the movement of the pelvis forward in space, right? So I will get myself into the position where this player was from the top of the swing into this position here. Talk me through the adjustments that you made with this player. Yeah, so we just spoke about this, this lead knee and how it stays too far inward. So we want to kind of get the pelvis here to shift forward. And then that gets that lean knee a little bit more um, in that external position there rather than staying internal. Yeah, and I can feel a lot more pressure through the outstep of this trail foot as I do so. So instantly in space, I'm going to know that the mass of my body is moving more forward through the ball, which is obviously yep. the opposite of hanging back as yep. such. And when you were first giving this player these feelings to work on, just slow swings at the beginning, yeah, we, we almost kind of felt like there was a wall up our up our left-hand side. And then from there, we had to you know, get to the top and trying to feel like we just kind of pushed through that wall, yeah. um, so to speak, as opposed to getting up to the top and it's feeling like we you know, got a little bit this way. So then obviously we're not pushing through that wall. Exactly, exactly. So when it, when it comes to this top of swing position where the lead knee is pointing in, a lot of golfers might say, well, why don't I just keep it out? 
you definitely don't want to do that because we see a lot of players try and keep the lead knee out. They don't turn, then their pelvis starts to sway. Yeah. So a great feeling and exercise that I found with players is if you feel like the lead knee works slightly in, so the lead knee moves towards the trail foot, as you're swinging the golf club back, that encourages the hip rotation, but then the change of direction, it's the hips and the lead knee moving towards the target in the downswing. Absolutely. Make mention to what my upper body is doing as I do that, because I'm not going spin out everything all at once, am I? Because that's gonna cause me to do what? Hang back. That's correct, yeah. Okay. So from the top, yeah, so as we start to push forward, what we're actually going to get is the upper body moving a lot more on top as well, mm. right? So we're going to cover the ball better, for a better word. And then from there, we can basically rotate out of that left-hand side and get a lot more, you know, get that chest a lot more on top of that golf ball as opposed to you know, the lower body out racing and then the upper body having to hang back and fire those arms down towards the target a bit too much. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in this instance, it's great to have a reference line if you're video recording yourself, guys, or a stick up against your lead side. And essentially from here, what you're trying to do is you are trying to get your lead knee and your lead hip breaking through that barrier. Yeah. What Ryan was just talking about before was um, the analogy of a wall, okay? But we wanna feel that as we're doing that, we're really shifting our lower body down. And I feel like as I get into this position, my body's down to the ground, I'm putting a lot of pressure in, and my upper body's stacked on top. Now, through this, at the end of the day, what changes did we see at the moment of impact? Was it better compression? Was it better start line control? So yeah, so obviously low point ahead of the golf ball, some more shaft lean as well. Okay. Okay. Yep. So obviously if we're staying, if we're staying back too much, we potentially lose a bit of that shaft lean. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, a dynamic loft is going to you know, increase or decrease depending on how that shaft looks at impact. Yeah. So I think all things being equal, if we look at uh, a plus and minus game, the fact of getting the lead knee moving in a little bit more of an external rotated position, allowing the lead hip to move forward, that's only shifting the low point of the bottom of the golf swing further forward. It's only allowing more shaft lean. It really seems like one of those moves that is only gonna be of great benefit for a lot of players to work on. So for the recreational golfer that's at home, and they're struggling with hanging back. Yep. Anything else that you would add a simple drill or exercise that they could work on or feel to help them stop hanging back and get forward into this real tall poised position that you see with the favorite golfer? Yeah, I think a lot of amateurs, right, will try and get that shaft lean um, yeah, just by basically doing that. Right, right? And so now all of a sudden the body isn't actually doing the work it's meant to. So a, a drill I like to give players just as a feel right, is if you just kind of stack a little bit more pressure on that lead side, mm -hmm. and just maybe, uh, let, let's say 60 to 70% pressure on this lead side here, kind of just preset what impact, or at least the forwardness of impact would feel like. Go into, the, go into your backswing, just three quarter swing, staying on this lead side, and start to learn how to get this upper body to push through and rotate. And then all of a sudden, if someone's got this feel in the in the downswing or well, if we can preset them to here first with some shaft lean at address rotate around that lead side push forward and turn you're going to start to feel that that compression and that that low point moving forward that's great that completely that's going to be a very very different feel for those players that hang back so what i would do is i'm going to also add one more thing what i tend to do with players is i actually get them to just do a bit of a push drill from address and i ask them what impact is and a lot of players will just go this is impact which yep. is the setup but we know that's not true right yep. so then i get them to feel that their yep. pressure of their hips is a little bit more forward the shaft leans a little bit further forward and i go okay well, this is what we need at impact within reason. You're also going to notice that the lower body's rotated a fraction too, Correct. right? We're not just trying to get forward and, and not rotate that body because at impact, we are looking for some forward and openness of, those, of, those, of that lower body or the hips. Yeah, absolutely. So from the address position, a little bit more pressure forward. And then I actually just get the player to push the ball down the fairway, yep. pelvis extended, feeling nice and tall. Then after I've done that, we're gonna blend your great drill in there. We're gonna do the three quarter backswing move. So from the address, I'm gonna get that feeling once more, lead knee out, pelvis forward. Then we're gonna go hips exaggerated forward, lead yep. knee out, yep. three quarter swing. Let's put that together.
Once again, you can see pelvis forward and look at that divot. Mate. Yep. So that club came down, low point got further forward, must have got significantly more shaft lean, which is something I could do with. Um, and the handle was leaning forward to a point where that just really compressed the ball and felt great. Yeah, and, and if you think about doing that drill just on its own, you will probably feel like you're a bit too far forward, but that's mm. okay because when we start to blend it into a, a normal golf swing, I, I doubt that you are going to push that much ahead of the golf ball when you're first trying to do that in a normal in a normal swing. Exaggerate, exaggerate, exaggerate. At the end of the day, it's better to be falling forward towards the target rather than hanging back. Absolutely. Good stuff.